Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Kian and I am a first year medical student and today I am going to be talking all about the med school interview experience and hopefully sharing some tips and tricks uh, for those people that are preparing for their interview. So first of all, if you got an interview offer Oh my gosh! Congrats! That is so exciting. This video is going to be composed of four parts um, and I'll try to leave like timestamps or descriptions or something so that you can skip to the part that is most relevant to you. But the first I'm going to talk about my general interview experience and hopefully this gives you some idea of what to expect on interview day. Second, I'm going to talk about how I prepared for the interview. Third, I'm going to talk about what I wore. And last but not least, I am going to talk about some general considerations and things that you should think about and keep in mind when you are getting ready to interview. So first of all, the general experience. So big announcement, I have been very private about which medical school I attend um, up until this point on this channel. And the main reason being for privacy, but I realize if you're preparing for an interview, it might be nice to have some context as to which medical school I interviewed for. So I only interviewed for one medical school because I applied during my third year and got in after third year, and this was sort of a practice run for me. So I applied to the school in my home province, which is UBC. Anyways, let's talk about the general interview experience. So I booked my interview for the early morning. It was the 8 a.m. session, had to be there at like seven o'clock to sign in. And the main reason for this is I like to get things over with, especially if they're the type of things you like to stress over. I also think that the mind is a little sharper in the morning. The afternoon is when I like to take naps. So that's another reason why I chose the morning. So I got there and I signed in and then they broke us off into all these little groups. And in these groups, they had like some coffee and some snacks. I personally did not drink any coffee before the interview because I was just so like hyped up on adrenaline. I didn't need the caffeine. Um, but I chatted to some of the fellow interviewees as well as medical students that were volunteering for the day. So one thing about people that are interviewing, the pre-med culture is very different from the medical culture in that it is very competitive and very cutthroat. Some people uh, may not be the friendliest or they might be trying to intimidate you and talk about all the amazing things that they've done. So my advice is to kind of keep to yourself. Um, and if you do talk to other interviewees, just keep it friendly, keep it light. Some people are really cold and I don't know if they mean to be, I think it could be just nerves. So that was that. And then they take us to the interview station. So basically there's a hallway of all these doors. Each door is a station and it's called the MMI, the multiple mini interview. So each station is an interview and they paste something on the door and it's a question or a quote or something that you have to talk about and discuss when you go in the room. It's really important to stress discussion. discussion. You're supposed to engage with the interviewer, have a conversation, and it'll be a little more one-sided, a little bit more on you, but they'll ask probing questions. And I think it's important not to talk for that full seven minutes because they might have really, really important questions or questions that allow you to expand on the prompt. And if you don't give them a chance to ask you these questions, you deprive yourself of the opportunity to discuss the prompt in more depth. As for what the prompts were and what the questions were, I couldn't tell you. First, because I'm sworn to secrecy. And second, because I don't remember. It's kind of a blur, but there are lots of practice questions out there. And I think general news events are fair game but this is news events that everyone has heard about. You would literally have to be living in a cave with like no internet or no human interaction to not have heard about big events. So for us, 
when we interviewed something that we thought was going to be a big question on the interview was the legalization of cannabis, which is now legal. The interview is not a test of like right or wrong answers. It's really a question of how well can you discuss a prompt or a subject and how can you critically think and string this thinking into a comprehensive narrative that an interviewer or perhaps a potential patient could understand. But as for the criteria that they look at, I couldn't tell you. All I know is that there are criteria because they need to objectively assess you and rank you against other interviewees. So we did all the stations and by the end I was completely dead. I do remember um, just having a lot of fun with it. After about the first station, first two stations, I was really relaxed and just really excited to be there. Some of the discussions were really, really interesting, so it was such a wonderful learning experience. So yeah, afterwards we had a tour of the campus, we had a few presentations about the medical program, and question and answer periods. So for some individuals, it's a question of what med school do they want to go to, and after interviews, it's an opportunity for the school to sort of promote their medical program and try and draw in the best medical students. Okay, so next is how did I prepare for the interview? I was pretty gung-ho as soon as I found out because we found out a couple days before our Christmas break in university. So over the break, I really did most of my prep and then I just sort of kept that in the back of my head until interviews happened, which was in February. I think the sooner you start preparing, the better, because the sooner you can try and hone in on certain things that you need to improve. So one of the first things I did was I got all of my friends together and I was like, hey, I got an interview, you need to interview me. So I bought coffee for my friends, I would do a one-on-one -on -one session with a friend, and we'd just sit in Starbucks for an hour, hour and a half. They would run through about four or five questions, and I would answer them, they'd ask probing questions, and then they would write notes on things they thought I did well, and things that I thought I could work on, and then I sort of collected all the feedback from all these friends, put it together, and looked at what was the most common feedback. For me personally, one was volume. First of all, we were in a loud coffee shop, but naturally I'm quite a soft-spoken person and I have gotten that feedback multiple times from different things, whether it be interviews or even assessments now in medical school. So that was something that I was really conscious of going in and I think it helped being aware of that. Another thing I did to prepare was I videotaped myself answering questions. This is so cringy, like, ugh. You notice all these small weird things you do that are kind of annoying, so I think it's a very effective thing, but it's kind of time consuming to like videotape yourself answering a question and then watch it. So I only did this two or three times. Another thing is my university put on a practice MMI, the pre-med club did this, if you have a pre-med club at your school, I would strongly recommend um, trying to get people involved. Basically, the second year, yeah, first and second year medical students volunteered to be interviewers and they stimulated the whole thing. They had timers going, you knock on the door, you read the prompt, you go in, you answer the question, and then the medical student writes down feedback once you leave the room. And that feedback wasn't really helpful. I think our pre-med club worked really hard to make it a confidence boosting experience so it was all positive feedback but it was really helpful to get a feel for how long is seven minutes how does it feel to be walking down a hallway knocking on doors going in reading prompts it was just sort of that physical aspect of the interview that was really helpful and the fourth thing I did again this was with friends and family is I just had really open discussions about topics that I thought could be on the interview and getting all those different points of view was really helpful because it helped me sort of synthesize an answer to certain questions. The last thing I did was I met with a couple of doctors and medical students and residents and 
basically this was more conversational and I would talk about things that I had questions about in the healthcare field and just get different opinions and you can totally bring that up in an interview say I was speaking with my family physician about this issue and they said this and I thought that was really interesting I agree or disagree because blah 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 um, so that was really really helpful in just opening my eyes a little more into specifically the medical profession and things that doctors feel are important in the present day. The last thing I'm going to mention is something that I didn't do, and I think this is really important. I didn't write down answers or try to memorize answers or regurgitate, because the interview is about thinking on your feet, and by memorizing your answers, you automatically inhibit yourself from thinking on your feet. So I never answered a question twice. Something that I did do if I was on my own and I didn't have someone to practice with is instead of answering the question verbally, I would write it down. And something that I found really helpful was doing like a pro and cons list and then, or like a web or a flow diagram as to how I would answer this. And this was a little more deliberate than you would answer a question in person. But it was a really good exercise because in some interview situations I could say these are the pros, these are the cons, this is my conclusion based on weighing the pros and cons, and this is sort of a summary. That's a very, very effective way to not only answer a question thoroughly, but to give your time give yourself time to think, because you can be like, okay, those are the pros, summarize the pros as you think on the spot. Okay, what are the cons? Uh, yeah, so that's basically all I did to prepare. Other students um, like to read a book called Doing Right. It's a book on sort of medical ethics. I did not read it for a few reasons. One, I hate reading things like that. I find it really like dry and I think that with ethics it's really hard. There really is no right answer and you, even if you read every ethics book in the world you would still come to these dilemmas and again the interview is not about the best or right or wrong answer it's about how you come to that conclusion and no amount of reading can really teach you how to draw a conclusion it's the exercise of getting there that you really need to practice next what to wear I was very concerned about this. I was like, my professional wardrobe was non-existent before medical school and it's slowly expanding. Basically, my advice would be look professional, more on the side of business formal. So things that I saw on interview day were suits for men um, and I saw pantsuits for females as well as dresses lots of blazers, and a lot of dark slash neutral colors. So I think the lightest color was like a medium gray um, to like navy blues, blacks, dark grays. It doesn't really matter what you wear. I think what matters is how you feel in what you're wearing. So for me, I wore a blazer, a black shirt, pantsuit, and just like small heels. For the hands, hands really important. If you have like chipped nail polish, I think that looks really tacky. So if you're going to wear a nail polish, I would make sure it's done really well. Keep your hands clean, moisturized, probably with something unscented. The reason why I focus on the hands so much is it's one of the most um, memorable as well as like the most common thing that people notice about you besides your face. So yeah. Take care of your hands, make sure they're clean, like no dirt under your nails, all of that jazz. Um, so anyways, back to the outfit. Uh, wear something comfortable. For girls, it doesn't have to be a pantsuit, it doesn't have to be a dress. As long as it looks professional, I think you have a little more freedom than guys do. For guys, it was really at least a dress shirt and dress pants. Um, you could add a tie if you wanted, you could add a jacket. Uh, that was sort of the spectrum. Uh, yeah, so don't be afraid to dress and like put your own twist on it, but 
keep it professional. It's kind of weird. Like you're given this box of like, what is professional? And you want to operate within that. And then hair, you want to have it in a way that is not distracting. So this for me is very distracting because I can do all of this like playing with my hair. Another thing to consider is the lighting, at least at my interview, was very bright. It was that ghastly fluorescent light that's like up in the roof. Very unflattering if you haven't blended your makeup well, if you are wearing makeup. So I would definitely check yourself in some natural light before starting because the last thing you want is like some like big foundation smear that's like two shades different from your skin, kind of moving as you talk. So another consideration as far as appearance goes. Um, footwear, you are walking a lot. You may be standing in the room, you may be sitting, you may be walking around in the room to explain a point. So make sure it's something you're comfortable in. Again, I wore heels that were about this big. Last but not least, some other considerations. Um, think about your location, how you're gonna get there, think about the timing, so really sort of visualize this day and try to think about problems before they arise. Some things might be the weather. A lot of interviews happen in the winter, so if you're going somewhere where there's gonna be a foot of snow, do you have the appropriate transportation to get there on time? Do you have the appropriate footwear? Do you have the appropriate outdoor jacket to keep you warm and comfortable? Um, another consideration is the privacy of fellow interviewees. So I remember getting there on the day and there were a few people I knew and I was like, oh my gosh, hey, how's it going? I didn't know you got an interview, that's so exciting. And they were like, please don't tell anyone that I'm here. <laughs> And I have respected that um, ever since. And some people like to keep their application very on the down low. Some people are very open about it. Um, I personally was someone that was a little more private um, until I knew I was in for sure. And then I like screamed it from the rooftops. Anyways, if you are interviewing in the future, best of luck. I send you all the good vibes and love and just confidence in the world. Don't be too hard on yourself. Try not to like ruminate on the interview after. It's really easy to be like, oh man, I should have said this. Oh, I should have done this. But you can't change the past and chances are you probably did better than you thought. Uh, just if you are going to think about the interview, don't ruminate, but reflect and reflect critically so that you can improve for next time. So I'm going to close the video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you are on a break from school right now, I hope you get all the well-deserved rest that you need. And if you're still working, good for you. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. And if there are any other sort of med school topics that you want me to touch on, in a future video, please let me know in the comments below. Um, and if you have more specific questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me on social media or private message me in whichever shape or form works best for you. If you want a more personalized approach to your interview prep, um, because I am on a break right now until the first week of January, so I should be able to be better equipped to take the time to answer any questions. Bye for now. Bye.